Yo, yo, what's up? Teo photo. Like, subscribe. Have you ever done this before? First you say, it's your girl, and then you say your name. Ew. Hello, dudes, 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 and everyone in between, and welcome to the Volkswagen Jetta. I am here with It's Ya Girl, Ashley Lowry, and she's gonna set this video up. So we're about to live stream two speakers in um, downtown LA. We're gonna walk you through the process of the live stream. The central hub of any multicam live stream is, of course, the switchboard, and we are practicing on the ATEM Mini Pro, but that's not what we're going to be using to broadcast. Instead, we'll be using the ATEM Mini Extreme Pro ISO, whatever that one's called, the one with eight HDMI channels in that can record to eight discrete H.264 tracks because we need those extra inputs, and also we want to give the client the option to re-edit after the live stream is done. For graphics, we are using Keynote because it has a lot of nice little easy transitions that can spice up your video, and also you can do pretty simple animations for text and things like that. But there's another reason we're using this one, and that is because you can load video files into this and play them back. In this broadcast, we are using that trick for the animated lower thirds on the A10 Mini that we talked about in another video, link somewhere in the frame. But instead of doing a green screen, we are doing an orange screen. The reason for that is the main color of all their designs is this greenish blue, which means blue and green screens are gonna kind of bleed into there and we wanted to reduce risk. So we're just sticking to this really orange orange. Nothing really complicated there on the graphic side. Moving on. What does make this stream a little bit more difficult than our average is that we are going to be combining live three camera studio elements with pre-taped segments. And I wanted time to practice all of those cues even though I don't have access to the space or to the talent involved. So here's what we came up with. A micro studio with three cameras, two talent, and this backdrop will be replaced day of with a large television screen that's showing the graphics of the presentation. All three cameras are GoPros and they are feeding into feeds two, three, and four on the ATEM. With this delightfully low budget solution, I can practice all of the cues I need to practice as a switcher. Because we're still in the setup phase, I've got the USB-C out plugged into the laptop where I have the ATEM software controller loaded up. This means I can't use that USB-C to record to an SSD. What I've done instead is pipe the entire feed through this Ninja Assassin so that I can record a 1920 by 1080 output and then share that with the client so they can see what I'm working on over here. Something else we're doing unique on this shoot is along this long green cable here. That's plugged into a Sony wireless receiver and the transmitter can be found right here. Both of our speakers on this shoot will have a wireless lavalier and those will feed discreetly into channels one and two on the ATEM Mini. If we had a third person on stage, we wouldn't be able to get away with this. Past Jesse. This is future Jesse, and I'm checking in just to tell you that I am flabbergasted how wrong you are. You don't have two channels of audio to play with. Dude, you've got 20. Mics one and two, those are both stereo. That's four channels. You have eight HDMI inputs, each with a stereo audio feed. That's 16 more channels. You got 20 and you're using Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras, which means you can designate left channel as mic in, right channel as XLR in, however you like. You gotta use your head. You have to grow up and become the man that you are destined to be or else I won't exist. Think, dude, think! We are almost ready for the premiere test broadcast, and the first thing I like to do for that is go over to our Ninja Assassin and press record. Now you'll notice that we have the program up on our external monitor instead of the multi-view. This is a problem that is solved with the Extreme and the Extreme ISO, but for this one, we have to pick between multi-view, which would be more useful for me, or program, which would be more useful for the client, since this is going out to the client afterwards, um, I'm gonna leave it on program, and that means I have to remember what's on channel one, two, three, and four. Not a problem, it's just four feeds, I can remember that. Next thing we're gonna do is go down to the Black Magic. We've got it plugged into Ethernet, so we are going on air. And then we come over to here and make sure that YouTube is receiving our feed. Fingers crossed, what do you got for us? 
Looks like it recognizes that we're live, and there we are. We've got the desktop up on the broadcast monitor. Outstanding. This means we can go over to Keynote, load up our first frame, and we are off to the races. You'll see that that's on our recording monitor. It's also up on the wall monitor so that I can see it all big and shiny if I want to. Let's run that broadcast, shall we? Hello and welcome to Burbank. We are now two days out from broadcast. That means we have 48 hours to try to guess anything that might go wrong day of and to preempt those problems with a good, I don't know, half dozen solutions each. We did get the teleprompter script last night and that puts me in a very good mood because that means that not only can we run tech rehearsal, but we can also run script rehearsal to try to find out if there are any timing issues or any phraseology in the script that might be difficult to say moment of. Don't think you can see it in the background, we just drove by the Warner Brothers water tower. Makes my heart go pitter pat every time I come into the office. I am now gearing up for the second test broadcast and we've made a lot of improvements since yesterday's stream. So I'm gonna walk you through the differences from then till now. First up, we've got Four Glow by Deggy Huegi, which is the album you should be listening to anyway. Next up, I remember that because we are using ethernet on the ATEM, any computer that's connected wirelessly to the same network can control the ATEM. So we've got this computer propped atop a trash can, and that's the one handling our chroma key rules and things like that. I also remembered that I could be using a secondary computer to monitor the live stream, and in theory, when I press on air, we should see that pop up pretty soon over here. Ta-da! And only worry about graphics on this computer. That also frees up the USB-C, which used to be connected to the computer for ATEM controlling, for dun -dun -dun -dun, a Samsung. All right, that is another day caked and baked. Iced and spliced. Done and dunner. I don't know, I don't have any of those expressions. So that means we've got one more day, that is tomorrow. And tomorrow is gonna to be very full up getting all of the equipment. We have to pick up the rentals. And also packing up the car. The entire studio that I have built in the office has to get torn down and rebuilt on Saturday in the gymnasium of the Budokan. Clearly, I am getting a little bit more tired than I was expecting to be. These are, these are long days, these are focused days, and the nights are very short. The nights end around 4 a.m. That's not for the production, that's my son. Our son wakes up every morning bright and early and lets us know that he wants to play. And dude, you know, of course, we have some level of um, discipline in our house. That's the word. Clearly we have no discipline because I don't even know what the word is. But when Darius wakes up at four o'clock in the morning and he's cooing and singing, what am I supposed to do? Go back to sleep, tell him to pipe it down? No, come on. He's a little baby and he's cooing and singing. What would you do in a similar, similar situation? Dear God, I'm so lousy, I am saying similar in the same way that uh, 50 Cent says it. In this white man's world, I'm similar to a squirrel. I'm hoping that over the course of tomorrow, I get to do at least one more rehearsal broadcast and that I get to do that broadcast on the ATEM Extreme ISO. But if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. I feel like we can make it through Saturday without any catastrophes. But it's always good to get one more rehearsal in if you can grab it. This is one of those rare occasions where I have deemed it necessary to do an entire map of everything we're going to be building because we have to set this up and tear it down and have everything work so quickly tomorrow. We are heading into the final rehearsal before broadcast and that means that I will be converting this room into a dummy broadcast center. So this is gonna take way too long to do in front of a video camera. We'll be doing it as a time lapse. See you soon, bye. The good. Number one, the microphones sound very, very nice. No surprises there. They are Sennheisers. There's a little bit of fuzzy distortion if you bend the mic cable just the wrong way. So we're gonna have to look out for that. Number two, some straighter lines revealed themselves as I was setting up the actual equipment in the actual configuration it's actually going to be for the broadcast. 
so you hypothesize and you draw all these diagrams and theorize and this, that, and the other, but when you have all the gear in front of you, your brain can see it a little more easily and rearrange everything a little more quickly, and I was very happy to see my brain give me solutions that I had not yet imagined. Number three, I hit all most all of the cues on the cue sheet. There were a couple I botched up a little bit. I'm gonna blame that on having to read the teleprompter as we were broadcasting. Once I'm divorced from the prompter and we have somebody else on that, then I will be able to focus exclusively on the switcher and the graphics, and that will make my job so much easier. Now I am out of throat sounds. I've spoken too much today, so I'm gonna cut this recording off and then I'm gonna to go to bed and I'm gonna leave the alarm off and sleep until I wake up because the day starts at 10 o'clock tomorrow instead of five o'clock, so kablammo. See you tomorrow, the actual broadcast day. Wish us luck, bye. Welcome to the day after, first of all, Otsukare-sama and Kanpai. Second of all, bienvenue to the Studio Shure SM7B. My god, if you can't tell the difference in audio quality between this and every other mic we've ever used, welcome to the channel. I don't know why you're starting on this video at this moment, but uh, I've got bad news for you. The audio quality is all downhill from here. The SM7B is, in fact, all of that and a bag of chips on the side. All right, let's talk about what went right and what went wrong. And everything, everything that went right can be summarized in this one object. The ATEM Mini Extreme Pro ISO, whatever the hell this thing is called, Blackmagic. I don't know what lunatics you have working in your marketing department but they, they are, they are uh, quirky hermits at best. Uh, let's talk about what this device is and what it offered our production that we couldn't have done with the ATEM Mini Pro. And it's all right there in the name, ISO, isolated tracks. Everything was recorded to its own isolated track. And not only that, when you click on the project, it opens up in DaVinci and ta-da, you've got a multi-cam project right there and you can start chopping up and re-editing it doesn't just give you the footage, it gives you the edit you did as well. So you're not starting from zero, you're starting from something that is 90% there. If you think you're going to be doing any live streaming, you don't have to get the extreme, but definitely get the ISO. If you're just starting off, pony up for the pro ISO, you will use it. You will want to make changes on your live stream, and you can. It's so much easier. Let's get into the worst of the worst, shall we? Without a doubt, the biggest wall we hit this entire production were these Sennheiser wireless lavalier transmitter receiver pieces of kit. They were both doing the exact same thing, and when two pieces of equipment do the exact same thing incorrectly, you can immediately narrow it down to three possibilities. Number one, they come off of the assembly line broken. Now this seems very unlikely for Sennheiser. So we're gonna move on to number two. User error, the problem was with me. Number three, the rental company gave us busted pieces of equipment. So I'm gonna eliminate number one off of the table immediately because it seems highly unlikely that Sennheiser is just shipping junk equipment. So what we're gonna do instead is try to replicate the problem and then try to fix the problem. These come with a provided mini jack and we're gonna plug that into the zoom. Next up, plugging a lavalier into the transmitter and turning that on. For this, I am gonna wear the lavalier and I will put some demarcation on the screen so you can know which bit of audio you're hearing, though it shouldn't be that difficult to tell the difference between a Sennheiser lavalier and the SMB7. So we've got the receiver powered up. We're gonna do the same for the transmitter. And we're getting signal from here, looking good. Okie dokie, no problems there. It looks like the receiver is catching it just fine. So we're gonna boost the signal over here on the lav. What you're hearing now is the lavalier microphone, and if you can't tell the difference, dude, go back to hearing school. It really seems to me like my Like this is very jacked, this part of the cable. You're hearing how quickly that, when you touch it, 
All right, that was transmitter receiver number one. We're gonna... This is definitely happening at transmitter level. This is not a clipped signal. If the signal were clipped, it would sound like this. That's what clipping sounds like. This is not clipping. This is faulty gear. Goodbye. Goodbye wireless system. We're gonna stick to the SM7B. And I was being a little cagey at the beginning. I said we got it from a rental house. And now that I am absolutely 100% certain beyond a shadow of a doubt that this gear is jacked, whack, and has to be sent back, the rental house was okay past me, future me, cutting you off because not everything has to be a fight, dude. Look, what you don't know is that you're gonna go to the rental house, explain the issue to them in a calm, collected, polite manner, and they're actually gonna give you a full refund. So please pump your brakes. I gotta get out of here. This video's got to be finished. The only thing left to do is what I know you actually came here for in the first place, and that's adding a piece up to the gallery. If you're wondering what all these pieces are up on the wall, I encourage you to check out our Patreon. That's where we have a special video feature called The Gallery, where we explain everything on the wall. Everything is intentional. Nothing is arbitrary. Thank you so much for checking in. Now go, please live your best life, and don't fight with the dudes at the rental house. Bye.